So you brought this great little home decor project that I think, it looks to me almost like a scrapbook page put in a frame. Which is exactly what it is. It's just a mini six by six layout, just put into a frame, custom made to size. I love that idea. And you said it's easy to do, but it involves a lot of painty, inky fun. It does, but it's super easy because I planned it out well in advance. First thing I'm doing is I'm using a, a mono printing with a gelatin plate. Mm -hmm. Now you can make your own gelatin plates, and there's plenty of instructions online. Just look up the, how to do it. Or you can buy some that are already pre made. And this one here is already bought pre made, and it's six by six, which is perfect for my little six oh, by six the same layout. Size. Yes, yes, yes. So if you buy on pre purchase, they have the pieces of of acetate on both sides. Make sure that you remove those. Okay, but you don't throw them, them away, away, right? No, you always you store save it them. In that. Yes, okay. so that when you're done, you put them back on, and that protects your jelly plate and your gelatin plate, mm -hmm. and protects it, keeps it going. So, so now I noticed that you're putting it onto a piece of paper. Is there any reason for that? Is that just to keep mess away, or does it need to be on like it a needs to have surface? something so that it's not sliding around? So this, okay. you know, the paper slides a little bit, but this the gelatin plate itself is not sliding. So it just okay. needs to be on something that it's not going to slide. A glass plate would work, a tile, anything else like that would work just as well. And even easier, I'm using a 6x6 six six stencil. So a 6x6 six six mm. stencil fits perfectly on a 6x6 six six gelatin plate. It's almost as if you planned it that I way. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so super easy to do. We're just going to grab a couple colors. Now I picked colors that would go well with a great family photo that I have that was taken when we were snow skiing. Because, you know, we're Florida. We're from Florida. We don't get snow. So this was an exciting trip for my family to go skiing. <laughs> I'll send you and, some of our uh, East Coast snow if you'd like it, our Northeast yeah, snow. there you go. So I'm just adding a couple of colors. Now you're using a fluid acrylic, and of course uh, any acrylic paint would work, right? Any it's just acrylic. the amount that you put on depends on whether it's fluid yes. or heavy, and et cetera. And how many different pools that you can get. And I'll mm -hmm. tell you a little bit about more of that in a second from the paints. So now I'm interested to see when you start to brayer with this, what happens to all those different colors mixing? Well, it, that's one of the tricks when you're doing this. I don't want to sit here and just work it to death because then all my colors will get totally blended together. So I just kind of want to take and mix them so that they just kind of run over each other. I'm I noticed, by the way, interestingly, that you're brayering in the same direction constantly. Yes. And that's really important, right? Yes. Um, that gives you a nice, smooth, even coat of paint across the entire surface. And at this point, I could look at it and say, OK, maybe I wanted to add just a, a touch more blue if I wanted to. So this and isn't something that's like one and done. You can, no. even though it's called mono printing, meaning mono one print, in the process you have a lot of wiggle room. Yes, but I'm going to show you how you can get two prints from this. Oh, so it's not a mono print, <laughs> it's a duo print. Yes, exactly. So we have our wonderful little six by six mm -hmm. stencil. Now I know you're moving a little bit quickly. Is that because you're worried about the acrylic paint drying out? The, because these are fluid, these are going to dry pretty quickly. Yes. So we're just going to lay that on top, and then we have our six by six piece of paper, and we're going to place it on top, and then just give it a use nice... Use your favorite tool, my which favorite is my tool, hands, everybody's yeah. favorite you tool. You could use a brayer if you want, mm -hmm. and I use my, I keep my art journal here to the side to kind of keep my brayer clean. I was going to say, you're cleaning off your brayer, but you're also creating a, a background, background for your art page. journal. Exactly. You could do that for a scrapbook page, for a card, for anything, and then right. you have beautiful paper that you've created. Exactly. So I could use my brayer, but you really want to make sure for this one that you get down in there in those little edges where the stencil holes Because this is a pretty heavy paper this that is. you're using. It's almost like a watercolor paper. That's how it, heavy is. it is. This is a watercolor paper. So when I pull this away, I get this great print. So I have my first print. I love but it. But we're not done. So now I lift the stencil. And if I'm really fast, I could take this and actually stamp onto another piece of paper. But we want to use the image that's left. And place And you it. mean really fast just because the paint might dry yeah, on, on the there, stencil. Yeah, on there, this is, again, it's going to dry really fast because this is a fluid paint that I'm using. If you use a heavy body paint or even a soft body paint, it dries a little slower so you'd have a little bit more play time. Right, and of course you can always put a paint extender in Correct. to lengthen the times that you have if you're working a little more slowly. Yes. Yeah. All right, so when we pull this up, pull now you have two. the second. It's beautiful, and if yes. we compare the two prints right here next to each other, the thing that I like is same stencil. Not only is it two different designs, but this one is distressed and this one is solid. So a way to get two very strong different looks yes. from really one effort. And, and look at 
Your gelatin plate is totally clean. It has a little bit of paint left on it. And, and I'm okay with that because I actually like to. You could clean it real quick with a little mm -hmm. spritz of water, some baby wipe or something. Life is too but short for cleaning. I'm going to keep it on there because I'm going to add paint again. Now this time I'm going to use a mask. Okay, and I know we talked about the difference between a, a mask and a stencil, and I have a really good example here to show you the difference here, okay? So this is a stencil, meaning you push the paint through these holes, Correct. right? And this is a mask, meaning it covers what's happening, and the image that you want is actually the image that it's covering. Yes. So stencil so mask, like when people space. are looking for stencil terminology. Correct. Yes. Yeah. But we're lazy, we just call them all stencils. We call them all point, stencils, right? it's so much easier. All right, but or this templates. is a word. So yes. family word, to go with my little family. So anytime you have an image on, when you're monoprinting that you want to come out correct, you're gonna have to put it down backwards. Okay. All right, so I'm gonna lay my family down and just kind of make sure that it's stuck on that gelatin plate very well. And again, just add just a couple drops of paint. Oh wow, you put the paint on after. I do. Interesting. And I don't have to worry this time about covering the entire thing because we're going to place it on a tag this time. Oh. So just add a little bit of paint, run it through. Wow, Same and that doesn't process. come up at all or anything. No, because it's kind of stuck on there. Mm -hmm. And then you can use your fingernail or little tool, but we're just going to use this and we're going to pick wow, it Wow, that's so crisp and, and clean. Create. Yeah. So make sure that we turn our tag the right way so that it's going to read correctly. Push it down, push, push it, it down. into the paint, yep. give it a little massage. All right. And it's fabulous family. There you go, so now we have our family. And of course you have lots of yummy paint on there and you don't wanna waste that. No, so we could very easily just pick up our journal, we could use some deli paper that we have and just place it over it and now do another pull. I always think that's one of the best things about having a journal around or a spare piece of paper or deli paper, or whatever it is, is that you just keep printing on it and using up everything I've been cleaning things on it so that nothing's ever wasted. You're maximizing your supplies. Yes. And you're then when next time you go to create, you have wonderful hand painted things to use. That is correct. And now so, we're gonna get to the assembling part, right? Yes, yeah, so I already have one here that is dry. So we're gonna use this just as a backer here. And just to point out, you chose to use the second kind of print that we did, the more distressed look. A little bit for this one, yes. Because I think that one was the first one. So. Oh, so there you go. You can make one for yourself and one for family. Yes, there you go. So what we're gonna do really quick is take and just add some double-sided tape to the back. Now, of do you always use a dry adhesive for stuff like this or would you ever use a wet adhesive? You could use a wet adhesive for this, mm -hmm. but for this I prefer the dry adhesive. Because it keeps all the paper from buckling. Now, if we look back at your finished product yes. or project, I just want to show how you've taken a simple frame, mounted the photo right to that beautiful background, added your tag, it's ready to go, a great gift for your family or a way to celebrate your yes. family.